Booz Allen is delivering mission-ready solutions, AI-powered, software-defined, and commercial-first. Combining deep mission experience with commercial partnerships, Booz Allen is defining a new defense industrial base, a network that crosses traditional boundaries to scale non-traditional technologies and brings our best tech to the hands of the warfighter faster, effectively delivering technology for today and tomorrow. Booz Allen, accelerating outcomes for today's warfighters. Hi, I'm Arun Serafin, Executive Director of NDIA's Emerging Technologies Institute. We're doing Emerging Tech Horizons podcast episodes here live at the Women in Defense Conference, which is being held in Arlington, Virginia. Joining me right now is Halima Locke. She's the Senior VP for Global Public Policy at Dark Hive and a former colleague of mine on Capitol Hill. Halima, thanks for joining us. Thank you so much, Arun. It's wonderful to see you. So tell me what you're doing here at Women in Defense. Oh, wow. I am soaking up all the knowledge. I am first and foremost a member of Women in Defense, and I'm a speaker on a panel this afternoon. And truly, it's just been a pleasure to hear all the perspectives. And I don't know how I'm going to follow up. Some of the great speakers have already went. The themes that we see coming out of the morning sessions are really aimed around how we grow the workforce that we need for the future of national defense, mm -hmm. and how we act as good mentors and mentees. Mm -hmm. So, okay, now this is the chance, Halima. Tell me about your long and, and very distinguished career, and I met you at an earlier stage of your career, and where you are now at Dark Life. Thanks, oh gosh. Going back into the Wayback Machine, um, I started my career as a procurement lawyer by training, uh, working in the nonprofit space. And I focused on procuring at the local and state level. And then I, I got the federal bug. And so I joined you on Capitol Hill, where I started as a uh, professional staff member on the House Small Business Committee, focused on procurement and the set-asides for the small businesses that work with the federal government and um, quickly learned that the NDAA was the policy behemoth on the Hill, and so got the opportunity to then work on the House Armed Services Committee where I led the uh, Title VIII work, which was at the time acquisition, foreign military sales, export controls, and then everything else that turned into industrial policy. Um, and then I did a brief but intense time on the uh, select subcommittee on the coronavirus crisis where I was doing more procurement work but from an investigatory perspective and that was really important for me before I went into the Department of Defense at the time um, Pentagon where we at that time I was in the front office early stages of the Biden-Harris administration working directly for the secretary and the deputy secretary as a senior advisor. And we really were applying policy in real time after the pandemic and coming out of the pandemic of industrial policy and supply chain security. And that um, led to my fantastic role because, um, I say fantastic because of the people that I worked with. Uh -huh. I did so much learning in addition to the learning I did on Capitol Hill with you of what it means to apply policy in action. And I was the Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense for Industrial-Based Resilience, where I had both the investment portfolio, the protection portfolio, and the planning portfolio um, for acquisition and sustainment within OSD. Um, now I am taking all that learning from my time in the federal government and applying it to industry in my role at Dark Hive, where I lead the, the global policy portfolio, but I, I think more importantly, I'm a teammate in figuring out how to shore up our shortages in the supply chain from a realistic perspective. So a little bit about Dark Hive, we're a defense tech startup focused on distributed manufacturing of uh, flight necessary components and full systems for uh, autonomy, I uh, think drones. So we have a number of capabilities, both at the full system level, but also at the component level and the design level. And it's really been fantastic to be on this side of it because talking about the industrial base from a policy perspective is one thing, but actually doing it is a whole nother ball game. And I am 
eating my vegetables, right. learning a lot, humbling myself around my assumptions right. of what it takes to develop technology, what it takes to actually procure and source critical components on time and on budget. So it's been phenomenal working with the team at Dark High. Who are some of your government partners right now that Dark Hive is working with? Uh, yes, right now uh, we work with OUSD r &E. So thinking through the uh, prototyping and experimentation stance of autonomy and how we're going to get to that next level, uh, thinking about swarm and all of the, the buzzwords that everyone likes to talk when they talk drones. Um, as well as the component level. So OUSB, ANS were in conversations around what they can do from a strategy perspective to shore up the commercial supply chain so that it's ready for defense applications, particularly of things such as brushless motors and the like that go into not just drones, but our healthcare system, robotics. Uh, we're working with uh, SOCOM, our partners there, and partnering with the Army on a number of applications, thinking through tech, thinking through how software and that backbone and that design enable the hardware to actually operate in a contested environment. And we are rapidly working B2B with a lot of the primes that are, you know, larger defense primes, but also some of the medium and small partners that we have. It's a lot of information exchange. So that's a storied career, lots of different stops, industry, government, government, legislative branch, and executive branch. Back to the themes of women in defense. Mm -hmm. Tell us about special times when you got opportunities or mentors or mm -hmm. guiding stars to help you got through this, get through this and get to where you are today. You know, I'm talking to one of them right now. <laughs> um, so I would start with, I think, you know, entering a policy space from a legal background is actually hard because it's not as clean cut. It's not as, you know, fact-based because you're making the facts. And so working with my colleagues in the Senate particularly was wonderful because, as you know, in the House, it's a different cadence, but working on the NDAA and seeking guidance from those that have gone through multiple cycles, that taught me how to temper my, I, I think, gut instinct to try and go in and fix and fix and do and do. And particularly being... So we taught a, you how to be lazy? Is that what no, you're saying? No, oh, okay. no. You taught us... Uh, us, look, I'm, I'm speaking in the we now because you have created multiple personalities. Um, you taught me how to time myself, how to wait for the appropriate moment, right? How to negotiate when you have multiple levels negotiating the same item at the same time and what that convergence can mean for good policy outcomes for the nation. Um, and in the slowing down and understanding that the facts are relevant for that moment in time and they may change, I applied that to then the executive branch and understanding being a woman in the legislative branch, being a woman in the executive branch, it all is around being an adaptable professional. And so to your point on mentors, it was a, a layered approach in the sense that I got great advice to always have mentors, have a board of advisors, and have kind of, you know, um, what they would call shareholders or investors, right? Those that you can call that don't have a lot of time, but they have high impact on what they tell you to, to temper your expectations and help you along. Those that are on your board of, they've they're invested in you, but they're not there day to day with you. So you can call them a little bit more frequently and they can map your trajectory with you, but you take everything with a grain of salt. And those that are your peers that to me are your day to day mentors that can show you the, the pros and the cons of how you interact and, and what you get for that either carrot or stick approach. So I don't know if there was events like this when you were the age of a lot of the people walking around here today. But what's your general advice for folks 
participating in an event like this? You know, what 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 would you have taken away when you were, you know, at that stage of your career, like mm -hmm. some of the folks at this event? Mm -hmm. You know, I'm sure there were events like this, but frankly, I didn't know about them because the number of women in national security at that policy level was not as robust, particularly in the acquisition ecosystem, right? Um, it would have been wonderful to be in rooms like this where you can hear the feedback at different stages of the career to understand, you know, um, everything is negotiable. There is no yes that can't be changed, just like there is a no no that can't be changed. And if I were walking around at that time, I would tell women and men that are participating to really listen with a critical ear for stages and phases of career, because I think that's what's applicable. Everyone has a different perspective based upon their stage and their phase. If they're at the end of a stage versus the entering a stage. And take notes so that you, it's not about not necessarily repeating mistakes, but it's around seeing that there's an other side to the mistake. So be unafraid, be, unapo like, be unapologetic about where you want to go, but be flexible and adaptable in how you get there. All right, I can't let you go without tapping into the incredible industrial policy expertise. Um, I'll, I'll spare you the small business question, but okay. <laughs> There's a lot going on these days. Mm -hmm. Coming out of the Pentagon, mm -hmm. coming out of other agencies, mm -hmm. talking about more use of industrial policy tools than we've ever seen before. Mm -hmm. Use of tariffs. Use of things like the traditional Defense Production Act or newer things like the Office of Strategic Capital. There's buying stakes in companies going on now. So if you were back on the Hill and you wanted to ask a couple of questions to say, okay, how is this going? What what are you what do you would would you be asking about? What what would be raising to the top of your mind? I would be asking what is your sustainment plan? I think um, right now there is a fervor and excitement on the initial investment, but then there's a little bit of a pivot to then, you know, chasing the new butterfly, if you will. And there needs to be a little bit more stability to create predictability for even the awardees that have been made, let alone those that are seeking to come and repeat the process and the effort to try and bring in more innovative companies it's a little bit of a destabilization of the i think system and structures because industrial policy isn't new it's just new to the you know normal national security public that maybe was focused on counterterrorism and now they're saying oh industrial policy is the is the new wave so let me use these talking points, but it's always been there, right? It's procurement, it's sourcing, it's planning. And so because it's at the tip of everyone's tongue, I would implore them if I were back on the Hill to produce spin plans that show the tale of sustainment and the tale of retirement and replacement, because all of that is industrial policy. And that's how we create not only stability in our systems from, you know, a buying perspective, but stability in our systems from an operations perspective, because you want the systems that you invest in to work when they are called upon. You have to go off and do a session here at the conference. What are you going to be talking about? Oh my gosh, I'm going to be talking about strategies to succeed and win tomorrow. Um, and what does that mean? A number of things, personally, professionally, it means thinking through the acquisition ecosystem that we're in right now with everyone. You know, we're here at Women in Defense, which is a part of the National Defense Industrial Association. Everyone is talking about these topics from a business perspective, but businesses are made up of people. And so that workforce 
component from a personal perspective is really what we're going to talk about. The strategies for how these women and men in this room can actually take the challenges presented to them in their daily life and succeed for both their company and themselves on their trajectory. That's great. Halima Locke is the Senior VP for Global Public Policy at Darkot. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thank you.